Hello one and all and welcome back to the TCM YouTube channel where we are getting and nearing the end half of our uh, county previews for 2023 and joining me at uh, this time is uh, Ben Bonnie the go uh, to preview Glamorgan's 2023 uh, season. First off Ben thanks for joining us and are you Glamorgan's only fan? Uh, probably and <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> that's the that's the uh, most horrible introduction I've ever given anyone. Um, but there you go. Um, let's start by uh, looking at Glamorgan uh, as a whole last year um, and your reflections on last year as well. Uh, sixth in the uh, group stage of the Vitality Blast, third in uh, County Championship Division Two, and fourth in Group B of the One Day Cup. Was it a good season to be a Glamorgan fan? Oh, the, the come down from winning the uh, Royal London Cup to not win anything. No, we didn't expect to win anything. Um, there were good moments. There were bad moments. And there were some just damn right outrageous moments yeah. last year, starting with pre basball going around and smack it around Derby and then deciding, actually, we don't want to go for the win anymore. We're just going to get out and then block the last two overs. <laughs> oh, cheers, lads. All the best. <laughs> uh, and then obviously mentioning random things that happened. Sam Northeast, Mammoth 400, not out against Leicestershire, where I was playing on the same day and struggled to score 13. <laughs> the Blast, <laughs> always been our weakest competition. We've only been in, I think, two finals days since the Blast started. So I never have high hopes. Some good wins against Sussex. I saw my first ever Glamorgan T20 win in person down in Kent. Uh, but overall, we, we don't do well in those competitions, so kind of happy with where we were. Some games good, some days not very good. Mm, well, I think it's uh, clear that the County Championship Division 2 is mainly where you have some uh, successes in the season. Third last year, as we mentioned, Um your Red Bull side uh, looks quite solid. Uh, we'll come on to Sam Northeast a bit later because he's a stellar um, player. But I want to, I mean, we can't talk about the county championship without addressing the elephant in the room, which is Marnus Lavashane is playing for Glamorgan again this season. Uh, how excited are you to see him back at Sophia Gardens? And what do you think his impact is on that side and for youngsters and for just everyone, really? It's so good, isn't it? He t turned up last year at uh, Nottinghamshire and started bowling seam. That's just how good the bloke is. Uh, it's always good to have. We won't have him for the first couple of games, I don't think. He doesn't arrive till mid-April, so Colin Ingram will fill in at number three, and then we'll have to, we won't have another overseas until him and Nisa arrive. I don't know if Nisa's arriving early. I've not seen anything on it, so it could be a tricky start, as I think we have Gloucestershire first with only one overseas. But to say you have... I think it's one of the charms of the county championship. The number one test batter in the world, casually in Division 2 at Sophia Gardens, isn't <clears> something <throat> you'd probably expect. Maybe you'd expect it at Lanx or Warwickshire or Surrey, you know, but to have him is good. And I think the likes of Carlson, Alex Horton, who we all saw at the Under 19s World Cup, will learn hopefully a lot from him and kick on in our red ball sides but it's just nice to have isn't it you know mm -hmm. just like they go and churn out hundreds and hundreds of runs for australia every day just a uh, lovely lovely bloke and a lovely man to have around yeah. with, isn't it? is that yeah it's not bad to have someone who's uh who's, who's number one test batsman playing in your county championship side is it um you mentioned there about uh, Michael Nisa and Colin Ingram your other overseas uh signings are obviously quite um in, in you know, embedded in Glamorgan uh, as a county uh, now. Colin Ingram, highest average in the county championship last year, 66, I believe. Uh, you know, Colin Ingram as well, integral to this side. Just having that duo coming back for the 2023 season, how excited does that make you? Yeah, it was a, it was a big year for Colin Ingram last year. He came back in on a Red Bull deal after I don't think he played for us since in a Red Bull game since about 2018 and then came out average 66 when needed and then just had to sort of drop to the bench when Marnus was back. <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice luxury to have. Um, and I think you say about Marnus' experience, I think Colin Ingram's played in any T20 league you can name around the world. Yes, we don't do as well in that competition, but the 
advice he passes on to the youngsters as well as having then Marnus and then Nisa who seems to like to follow Marnus we seem to like to sign the same overseas every year which, which is great because you know where your team is but um, yeah it's a good sort of trio to have I, I'd like to think they all get along with each other you, especially the two Aussies I imagine they're sort of pushing each other around and uh, having a great bit of banter but not abuse let's turn to a, a bit of white ball um then for you obviously you don't sound too optimistic about your chances but you've got a new white ball head coach in uh, and head coaches can can do things and can change things around i wonder what you think the main thing that Markeline needs to fix is what do you think is the issue in in your white ball of cricket particularly the vitality blast i know you won the one day cup so it would be unfair to say that's a that's a pressing issue but vitality blast wise where do you think you need to uh improve in order to challenge really i think the perfect example of where we could be is the last game we played against kent where we got, I think it was 190 off 20 overs, and it was sort of the perfect game for us. Open a set of platform, Dan Douthwaite came out and blasted a 20 20 off 23. 23. Yeah, yeah, I, I've that, got that. That's one. where we need to be. We, we have a habit of not picking a side that is capable for that. So we'll do something really random, like have Billy Root down at eight, but not bat, but then not also bowl because he doesn't bowl. But we'll have all rounders at the order, and it feels like we're wasting a slot where we could have a better bowler that's playing there if he shouldn't need to bat. And then if he does need to bat, he can just go out and swing and swing hard. So for me, it's mainly team selection. I think batting got better last year. The game against Middlesex at Sophia Gardens, where Lloyd and Northeast just decided to smack it around everywhere. And I, th- I can't remember how much we put on in that one. I was actually at a concert and I just got loads of messages from a group chat saying that we were doing great. And so that's the one time I can't watch. <laughs> wow. So yeah, bowling's okay, but with Hogan gone, because he was our, I think our highest wicket taker in the blast last year. Again, who... If you look at like probable lineups, you've got to think who's going to step up. It wasn't the year for Prem Sasodia. He'd had a good year the year before. We tried opening the bowling with him, open with spin, and he'd managed to pick up a few scalps. But I think teams have sort of quickly got around that tactic and realised what it is. So they target him in the power play. And then when you drag him back, they're already set on like 100 after 12 overs. Doesn't have the same uh, accuracy as you need. And he gets tonked for 20 and over. But there could be there's there's a lot of hope and say so Dan Dowthway shows his character and potential as he's got a gig with the Welsh Fire. I know it's a county preview, but shows how good he actually is. And being the only one to get it from Glamorgan probably shows where we are as a limited oversight in the uh, in the shortest format of the game. Mm, but you, you've touched on it there. I mean, you don't you only lose Dan Delvey, which puts you in a very nice position for the one day cup. So um, let's talk a bit about that then. And um, obviously, just pointing not to defend your title last last year, but I think on paper you're one of the stronger sides when it comes to comes to that one day cup because. You don't lose your core integral group of players and you still have, you know, the likes of uh, Billy Root. Of, well, I don't know. I'm waffling here, but I don't. I, I haven't done my research. You waffled? But, Never. Yeah, I know. Um, but the point is, uh, one day court wise, you seem to uh, be able to have a core group of players that not many taken away from the hundred. Do you think that that is going to help you uh, this this year as well as it did uh, maybe in previous years? Um, yes, I mean we were in a similar position last year. We didn't. I think we only lost one player. Not that I can remember who it was. I think we lost Hogan towards the start to Southern Brave as an emergency call up for an injury. <laughs> So, but we were quite disappointing with the ball last campaign. And it says it all in part time spinner Kieran Carlson took nine wickets at an average of 17, and he was our best bowler. Mm. Quite. I know Van der Hooten got injured. He took four at Derby. I think he got four for 41 in the first game, and then we didn't see him again for the rest of the competition. But we scored runs, but we also then conceded 
what felt like a lot more. The game at Worcester, I think we had them five down for about 120 and they still managed to get 320 after we'd scored 340. Right. So it's like after having a team in that position, we weren't clinical enough last year. We got a bit unlucky that if uh, other other results gone our way on the final day, we could have been in for the semi-finals, but I honestly don't think we'd have picked up the silverware again, just based on how we're playing. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the openers this time. We've got Tom Bevan, who came in towards the end. He scored 100 on a on a nice deck against Hampshire. Um, whether we go Lloyd and Northeast at top, or if Bevan slots in at five or four, obviously we'll have no Manus or Nisa, because I think they'll be back with the Australian teams by then. So Ingram will probably be the only overseas unless we sign Ajaz Patel again, like we did last year, based on the fact that he took 10 in an innings. That was the only reason I think we've got him. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's that we can score runs, but and also Harry Podmore, how will he get on in the one day cup for us? I don't think he'll have played much white ball with his injuries. So hopefully he can come in and, uh, put on a decent performance but ideally for us we need to be a, just a bit more clinical with the ball when we when we won the competition in 2021 we bowled out knots for 80 that's being clinical whereas then we're letting Worcestershire on 150 with five wickets left is a bit we need to work I think that's where's to work on Lloyd also missed some games last year because he wanted to rest because he'd had the T20 stuff and the county championship stuff so he wanted to rest for a few of the one day cup games which then reshuffled the side with Bevan and North East as well let's see how he goes after being probably our best batter throughout that well you've mentioned him there so let's come on to some North East and when I was doing my minimal research for this he's certainly the player that stands out a averaging 59 in the county championship 51 in the vitality blast 48 in the one day cup that is standout really uh, I mean he's surely your best player and uh, he's he's going to do you think he'll continue this form in all three formats through this uh, through this season and keep building and building and building? Yeah, it'd be nice to. Before before he joined us, he had a bit of a merry-go-round with clubs. He joined Knots for a couple of games and didn't crack on. I think he was at another club before that and didn't crack on. So there were plenty of question marks coming into the season of, well, he's, we've just signed you on a three-year deal after you've been bouncing around random clubs getting a couple of games a year. But he showed his class from his first ton up to the 410 and he even said if the if Lloyd wanted to declare before then he would have happily taken a 350 or a 300 and could have just declared and won the game. Probably our game of the season that day, batting for what felt like an eternity and then bowling out Leicestershire with about 15 overs to go on that final day was a uh, unbelievable and again I missed it all as I was out in the field I think it's you I'm starting to see, I'm, start, I'm starting to see a pattern. I'm starting to see a pattern. Well, it's, it's it might be you that's a you know maybe if you just uh, if, if it is play a lot of Sundays this year so hopefully yeah. it is me and we'll just get promoted based on the fact that I can't watch it let's uh, pin you down on one player who you think uh, fans of counties across uh, England should be looking out for uh, this season and uh, who you think so uh, who are you going to pick and why the fanboy in me just wants to say Dan Douthway but I'm not going to uh, <laughs> I'm going to go and hopefully he stays injury free this year because I think it hampered him a bit last year with Tim van der Hoopten. can hold a bat if required hopefully he doesn't have to but he's very good in the red ball side especially we didn't get many opportunities in the white ball side I think Nisa kind of takes his spot when he's available so last year, before injuries took over, Van der Hooten had 24 wickets at 29 and a half. And our third best bowler behind Hogan and Nisa. Uh, the year before, when he got a full season, he was uh, up scoring runs against Yorkshire and taking wickets for fun. But then injuries hampered him. But I think he could have a big part to play in the one-day cup with his associate level of cricket playing for the Netherlands. So he'll have played a lot of 50-over cricket. A lot of 20 over cricket as well, but obviously we're just not as good at 20 over cricket. So if he can stay fit and have that sort of attack 
be consistent. Um, I know you pinned me down to one, but I'd like quite like to see Prem Sisodia have a good year as well. Absolutely. Uh, well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you mentioned that just briefly. Nice to have one. Um, let's pin you down some uh, more here with the uh, prediction time uh, as we come to the end of this uh, preview. Uh, let's start with the county championship. Are you going to go better than third this year, or do you see it as another season sitting pretty in Division Two? Uh, I actually wrote a prediction on here that says probably third. Oh, fantastic. So I it's a bit of a it's a bit of a trickier one with Yorkshire and Gloucestershire coming down. I feel like they aren't the same calibre of te- teams that went up from last year. So they Yorkshire will be very strong, whether the international stars they have back. Who knows? We'll wait to see that. But I feel like you probably can grind a result against Gloucestershire if you really need one. And we saw what we can do against some teams. Um, obviously, Leicestershire, no disrespect to them, letting Sam Northeast score 410. I don't know if the same will happen. If the same happens this year, then I might just retire. Um, Derbyshire, we showed that we probably should have won there. The games that cost us the most, we I think we lost three games last year and both of them were against Middlesex and one against Durham. Mm. We should have picked up a win against Derby when they just decided to stop batting normally and got out. Uh, Middlesex results were poor. One of them was an early um, Glamorgan pitch, which did a lot, but Middlesex showed that you could bat on it. I think Simpson got 100, but then he seems to get 100 any time Glamorgan play against them. And then we played at a Lord's pitch on the slope where we got absolutely skittled as well. So I think if we can apply ourselves better, there's always a chance. But I think sort of third or fourth will probably be where we sit. OK, uh, well, it's not <laughs> it's not very optimistic, but it's a it's a realistic prediction. And I think it's fair to say you've uh, heard me for a while. I'm open and honest. Um, let's uh, go then to the white ball stuff, and I think you might be uh, a bit more pessimistic with this one, judging ju- 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 judging by how uh, you've uh, you've you've explained the uh, Vitality Blast prospects. But where would you put them in the South Group this year? I would actually like to think with a new coach and what we what we have experience wise, and with a bit of a proper selection we could get fourth or fifth which is an improvement on last year may only be by one it's just about being consistent this year i think even if we get even if we come back now and we get sick if it at least looks like a more consistent performance so we go out and score sort of 150 160 and then the next week we score 150 160 and then don't do what we do now which is then get bowled out for 90 then it's a steady on improvement. How he, how Matt Maynard now not looking after the squads, I think, and not having to look after Welsh Fire as well, quickly mentioning that, mm. his sole focus now being the Red Bull team will hopefully mean that the White Ball coaches now can look at it and go, this is what we need to do to get us back to where we need to be. I'd really like it to be a third finals day. Whether it will be or not, I don't know. I, will I ever see Glamorgan at a finals day? Who knows? Uh, you never know. I mean, uh, I'm going to go I mean, probably fifth. It's unpredictable, the Vitality Blast. So you never know. You get on a run of games and you could just end up in the, the final. And I know well because Hampshire did it and then beat us last year. Lancashire, that is. Um, finally, then, one day cup, your best chance at silverware? Yeah, I don't think you could put it any other way. Objective really is to get out of the group. What happens after in knockout games is completely up to fate, you could say, whether we could play a fully strength side after people are released from the 100. We could play um, a struggling not side who might have loads of players in the 100. So I think the first thing we have to do is put on some better performances than we did last year we had some great performances and smacked the ball around in some games um that derbyshire game to mention where i think we skittled them for about 130 150 i can't remember but then we played games against kent where we got into the game and then all of a sudden we just crumbled and couldn't catch up with them so 
if we can be more consistent there, there shouldn't be a reason we don't make top three. I'm not going to say we're going to finish top of the group because that's when we lose every game. So if we finish top three and get out of the group, it again will show a good improvement and that the change in having Matt Maynard only looking after one set of players and then the other set going down to the new white ball coaches and who knows what comes from uh, the academy as well and if there will be any more signings for us to help bolster the team but I feel like that uh, will be unlikely with the amount that we uh, released from their deals so yeah I mean we've got nice opening fixtures in the one day cup as well if you ask me who I'd want to play first Worcestershire and Derbyshire I'd probably bite your hand off so we have got Warwickshire in our group as well so that could be an interesting one with the amount of players that they'll have missing so I think it works out we need to win five to be pretty confident to go through so if we can win five i'll be happy with that absolutely uh i think it's been fair to say it's been a realistic preview uh not the most optimistic one i've ever done but you know uh you know what you get from causes, me mate and there are there are causes for hope i think at glamorgan i think that's the main thing to say um as we as we wrap up this ben thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us and thank you to you lot at home uh, for joining us as well if you enjoyed you can give it a like and subscribe you also cannot but you know it's up to you uh, and we will see you again in the next one